Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and we're currently in the middle of a Let's Play tutorial for a great new one called Distant Worlds 2, and this game will be coming out tomorrow, March 10th, 2022, and we are playing through it, trying to learn all the mechanics and get you ready to go for when the game drops, uh, you can jump right into it. So let's uh, continue on here. Now we have gone over over exploration okay we've gone over resources and mining we've gone over construction we've gone over research and science and uh, the different uh, things you can uh, find out here and advance your civilization we haven't really talked about military as much yet we just haven't had a reason to but we will be running into pirates they're like barbarians in other 4x games they give you a you know little bit of a challenge up front so you start to learn the military and hopefully we'll get into that in the next episode or two um colonies we talked a little bit about that last time characters so now in characters we have a new one and a new spy appears this spy is named Gaiut Thanda and he has appeared at Trawaz show me let's check out Gaiut and there is there he is look at that <laughs> he can find out some info uh as anybody that's watched my War in the East 2 tutorials knows, I love a good monocle. And this guy's got an alien monocle. Uh, I've even donned a monocle in a War in the East 2 episode. Okay, uh, enough about that. But anyway, um, he's shown up here, and like every new character when they first show up, we don't really know a whole lot about them. We don't know much about their skills and their traits, not yet. Now, we have him on automated. I'm going to turn him to manual. I like to control the characters and the state ships. So all of those I like to control. That's that's like the level of control I like is to do that. Uh, it adds to the role-playing aspects, I think, when you control the characters. If you have them on automated, all of a sudden you'll find out they're in some other empire doing a spy mission or something. You're like, oh, okay, that's cool. But I like to send them. Uh, so that, you know, you're a little more involved. And if we look down here for spies, you can see target empire. Well, we don't have any other empires that we know about yet, so that's not going to be applicable. Mission type, and you can look here at all the different kinds of missions that your spies can run. And it's actually quite extensive, right? Counterintelligence, looking for spies in your empire. Steel territory maps, galaxy maps, operations maps, research information, sabotage construction destroy a base inside a rebellion <laughs> i mean you know you can really these spies can do a lot assassination deep cover incite revolution for now we're going to put him on counterintelligence right so we we only know about our own empire but somebody else may know about us and if they send a spy we want him to try to uncover it counterintelligence until canceled right so you can do this one month three months 12 months until canceled and assign the mission so he is doing counter intelligence we'll have him on manually controlled and you can see over here in character spies okay let's go back over and look at our other characters we have Voss serifu our leader he is also on manual He's really not going to move. He's going to stay here at our home moon. But you can see uh, all of his different bonuses or penalties, as the case may be, from his traits down here. Uh, we talked about this before, but you can see he's beginning to, you know, continue to level up with some of these other uh, different, uh, I guess, characteristics that he has. Well, they call them skills. Let's call them skills as well. Uh, we'll keep him on manual. Our general, I'm going to keep him on automatic. And the reason being is, I mean, there's no other place for the general to be other than on our home moon. We don't have any other colonies. Uh, we don't have armies anywhere else. And so he'll be here. But, you know, were we to get attacked, we want him to be the general of our ground forces that you see down here the sixth defender brigade and so uh he'll automatically do that and that's fine we do have the scientist zo paklidu and we don't know a lot about zo yet and we really don't have any place to put zo uh because we haven't built a research lab but that will be coming in 2.27 years. We will open up research labs, and that is another kind of installation that we can build as the state. So the state will go out there and build the research lab, and we'll get to that when we get that full research done. Now, this time, as we go along, hopefully we'll run into some pirate. Well, the pirates will probably run into us, so we can start talking about military a little bit. 
Um, we're also going to go through the economy, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm going to get the game going, but before we do that, I want to back up. And let's just look at the galaxy, see where we are, okay? Uh, one thing I did want to show you, the nebula view, these are the roadblocks in space, as I call them. These are just places that for, you know, the various reasons you see here, galactic storms, ion storms, a lot of storms, or a radiation zone, you cannot move through them. <clears throat> They're essentially impassable terrain. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to keep that off because we're not quite spacefaring out you know, into the stars yet, and so we don't really need to know that. Oh, by the way, I'm going to keep the scientist on automatic for now. When we get closer to getting research labs, I'll turn it to manual, and we'll talk more about that. Um, but the other thing I wanted to do, so let's go down to our Escalon system, and let's actually, we'll just go to Trawaz, and we'll look here. We have now for the most part, reconned or explored our gas giant, Escalon 5, that we go around. Um, the Europa Miva is currently being surveyed, and you can see here the Weary per Peril only has four seconds left of surveying Europa Miva, and we'll know more about that rocky metallic moon. But then we have a bunch of scout ships out here around Escalon 4. Now, let's click on one of those. Well, before I click on an exploration ship, let's click on this ship. This ship is a mining ship, and you can look over here, the Broken Princess. What a name. Um, it is mining FY592, which is an asteroid, in the Escalon system, and it's un offloading at the ancient Agdarian spaceport. That really is just, you know, cool information uh, because really the civilians are controlling this, right? So the mining ships, your civilian economy is now going. We have explored things and they are sending out mining ships. They are also sending out cargo ships uh, wherever we may build a mining station. So you have mining ships and mining stations. And the reason I've hit on that a few times is because it confuses it confused me at first. Um, you know, I kept getting them kind of uh, discombobulated in my brain. But this is a mining station. It is a permanent uh, base, you know, or, well, I'll just call it a station. It's a permanent station here at Escalon 5. The civilians will send over cargo ships to pick up the resources and take them back to our home moon. Um, you can see the construction ship here is still working here. Um, that is, as I said, stationary. But when we go over here and we look at what we were seeing there, this is just a civilian ship that does mining on its own. That is mobile, right? But it will go back and drop that at our spaceport. Okay, uh, we have a bunch of navigators out here, which are what they call our scout ships. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, once you get the warp drive, uh, you you know these things i right now i have it on ship automated auto explore the problem that you have with the automation on the exploration ships is that they have a tendency you know they'll go here close and they'll explore everything here so they're going to explore like every damn asteroid that's out here um there's, you know, generally speaking, there's not going to be as many resources on these asteroids. Now, there may be some, and you may find something cool out here, but the better bet is to explore the star and the planets first, right? So if we're min-maxing the game, we're trying to find resources as fast as we can, you really want to take something like the Surly Expedition and have it go explore Esquin. Uh, you want it to come here and explore that main star because we're probably going to have more resources there. Um, so that's the Surly Expedition. And if we want to go look at all of our exploration ships, we'll just, you know, go here. And uh, that was the Surly. Okay. Um, let's go get, well, we want this to keep doing Europa Miva. That is that moon. Okay. And then you can see here NL830 CE59. Those are all asteroids, right? And so we want to take something like the Jubilant Empress, and we want that to go to Escalon 3. So I'll right-click on Escalon 3, and you can see there, Survey Escalon 3. Perfect. Uh, the Distant Horde. And 
this automatically clicks over to manually controlled when you give it a new order like that and so it'll click off of there automatically this one's got 33 seconds left this one's got 110 let's just take that one off that asteroid and let's go down with this one to Escalon 1 and if we back up you can see now that we have the warp drive how far we can jump we can't jump to another system but we can explore all of our system and so let's get down to all the planets first and then after that we can make you know uh, put them back on automated explore and uh did i do that i thought i did that the distant horde pristine renegade it's doing escalon oh i did escalon one escalon three escalon system let's do this one more time I want you to come do Escalon. Why is it not moving there, though? Yeah, close enough. Uh, okay, so get out to the main bodies in your system first. And again, I like to control most of these manually. You know, at times I'll put them on auto explore once we've got all the planets done here. But until we can jump to another system, let's get the big stuff in our system done first. Okay. Uh, we talked about the spy. There he is. Guy Thonda. Let's dismiss that message. Let's get the game going. Um, and this time, like I said, we're going to talk more about the economy. It's a huge part of this game, but until you really get going, you know, it's hard to it's hard to explain it until you know more things. We've got a really positive cash flow here, and one of the things we're going to want to do is build some more construction ships. Uh, we have got the Graceful Empress with no mission, no mission, no mission. That is the last thing you want right is no mission uh i will say this last time i realized that a few of the ships i clicked on i said oh you know they don't have a mission or something like that they weren't fully constructed so uh that was my bad um so we've got a mining station going here we are now we have uncovered the resources at europa miva 49 percent mebnar 45 percent kuprika aculon is 84 percent Okay, and you can see what Aculon does. It's very strong, heat resistant, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go back to our construction ships here. We could do it right here, and we could give them manual orders, because I have them on manual, so I could just right click on your Pamiva uh, once I picked one of the ships, or we could go over here to resources. This is the other way to do it. These are our current mining locations. Here are new mining locations, places we could build. And we've already given an order to go to your Pamiva, right? So cancel building a mining station at your Pamiva. Well, we don't want to cancel that. So as soon as that's fully explored, what is this? Oh, that's another miner. Um, and you can see it's, you know, it's warping in and out, going to mine either our main uh, planet here or otherwise. Uh, we don't know. Um, you can do it here. Build a mining station. Private economy expense. Build a mining station. Build a mining station. Or, like I said, we can go over to the construction ships like the Graceful Empress. It has no mission right now. Right click at your Pamiva. Build MS1 at your Pamiva. Okay, so now it's going to come over here and build a mining station. And the question comes up, well, what all should you build a mining station around? Uh, I would say anything that's got more than 20% of a resource in your home system, certainly. Uh, I think that, you know, that is well worth it. Now, we also have Escalon 4. Let's go to the Lavish Splendor. The Lavish Splendor has no mission. Let's say build MS1 at Escalon 4. Uh, we don't have much there, actually. Well, we may want to cancel that. <laughs> um, and, oh, that actually uh, is a good point of how you cancel orders. So right now I said build that at Escalon 4. Escalon 4 doesn't have Jack Diddley around it. Um, let's stop. Stop that. Now it has no mission. Um, let's take one of our other exploration ships here. So this, the distant horde is surveying this asteroid. Let's actually have it do this moon. Okay. And so if we go back to the, our exploration ships, you can see survey Okran, the distant horde, it will come over here and do that. Let's get to going then. All right. And if we back up, we can see our ships, our exploration ships are heading out here. It's kind of fun when you get up here on them. They, they really look like they're warping. Oh, where'd you go? He's like coming in like a bumblebee in here. Uh, but we have sent these off 
to explore these other planets in our system. Uh, while that is happening, and we're now going to explore uh, this Ocarin out here, this moon, um, let's look at our finances, okay? A tour is available for your empire. Perfect. Let's take the tour, okay? Your empire, economy, one of six here. The screen shows a breakdown of both your state and private economies. Each type of income and expense is listed for the current and previous year, as well as a projection of the expected amounts for each of these the current year. You can hover over each amount for more information. State economy. The top section of your state economy shows regular anticipated income and expenses. These amounts change slowly over time as your empire grows. The bottom section of your state economy shows irregular bonus income. So sometimes we just do something that's out of the normal course of business that is bonus income. These amounts can vary widely, often being comprised of private shipbuilding income where the private sector of your empire buys new ships, okay? Uh, private economy. The private economy section shows the income and expenses of the private sector of your empire. You have no direct control over how the private sector earns or spends money. Okay, well, let's go look at this. Now, again, so our empire here, we have 22,380 cash. Colony approval, war weariness. We're not at war. That's good. Cash flow remaining after subtracting all regular expenses, colony growth funding, and research funding. Plus 1.7, right? So that looks pretty good. Bonus income, we have none right now. And total population, we're now at 2.16 billion. So we have grown 164 million of population just so far in the first couple of years. So uh, that is obviously uh, based on you know, uh, your growth rate, uh, that uh, the various bonuses you have uh, for your race. So when we're over here, the economy, F2, here's the state economy. How much cash we have. And you can read about that, cash on hand that can be spent on new units, purchasing resources, etc. Et Income. Okay, so if you are a CPA, you're going to love this section of the tutorial. Colony tax. Tax rates are set for individual colonies. Tax income is collected from the private income of the colony at the set rate. High tax rates reduce happiness and slow growth. We already looked at the tax rates, remember? And so, you know, I think for Republic right now, the sweet spot, uh, we have that automated. It's at 19%, if that just kind of gives you an idea. But we could change that if we wanted to. We could unautomate it if we wanted to. But right now, it's at 19%. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, okay, and because of that, given all of the economic activity going on in our colony, now we only have one now, right? We can set different tax rates or the game will set different tax rates for each different colony. So if you have a colony that's not quite as happy, you could lower its tax rate and maybe raise the tax rate of one that is happy. Make sense? Projected for the current year, the current for the current year. So we're in March. We've gotten 1,000 out of the 57 that we expect. The previous year, you can kind of see the growth, right? We're projecting 5.7 this year. It was 4.5 last year, and then you can see the totals there. Annual expenses. This is what you're going to be spending your money on, and we'll talk about more about it when we go to funding levels here. Uh, right now, I have these automated. This is certainly something I would unautomate uh, or flip over to manual control as I play a real game and not just a tutorial. Uh, ship and base maintenance. It's the most important thing that you spend money on. You can see the projected, again, projected, current year so far, previous year, okay? Troop maintenance. That's kind of baked in, right? We've got those troops, uh, that one, I think it's a battalion or a regiment that's on our home moon. Uh, facility maintenance, tribute paid, colony growth, research, shipbuilding, and fuel costs, all right? You're gonna get to uh, kind of understand these more as you play the game yourself. Uh, I'm not gonna go in depth in each one of them. You can read about them, but we'll talk more about them when we get to funding levels. So when we take our projected income, our projected expenses, our projected cash flow for this year is uh, 1740 okay? And that's in thousands, I think. Uh, annual bonus income. Previous year, we actually made quite a bit by bil building civilian ships. Private economy. We do not control this, but the bigger this gets, the better off it is for us because they will pay taxes 
obviously. And also, they'll want to build more ships. It kind of just builds on itself. It's like a rock rolling downhill, right? The bigger the private economy gets, the more taxes we will uh, be able to extract. Funding levels. Now, you can see automated. So, you know, anything that you could possibly control, you'll be able to find the automated manual button somewhere close, okay? Uh, and here we've got this automated just because it's tutorial and we're first starting out. But we'll click over here to Empire Funding Levels. Wow, how did I know that was next? If you choose, you can fine tune how your income is spent. So we saw the income coming in. We see what we're spending it on. How do we fine tune that? Note that Empire funding levels are automatically handled by your advisors. Controlling these levels manually is an advanced option. To turn off automation and control funding levels yourself, visit the economy section of the Empire policy screen right here. Remember, we talked about these policies, what's automated, what's not. Allocate maintenance funding. If you choose to manually control funding levels in the screen, you can set the percentage values for each of your main regular expense areas. So these are our main expenses, okay? Off the top, they want you to reserve 10%. You know, it's uh, it's good to do in your real life too. Save ten, the first ten percent, put in the savings account. Okay, that's what this is. But if you get in trouble and you need more money to fall through down to the other levels, you could certainly turn this down. Or if you're in great shape, you can turn this up and it's just your stockpile, right? Ship maintenance, eighty-five percent. You may say, "Gosh, that seems really high," and it is. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't run out of this, and that's why it's so high off the top. Um, you can see the amount available would be four thousand three hundred eighty-eight. The amount we've actually used is twelve sixty-one. You want to make sure this is quite a bit lower than what you're allocating for it. You don't have to use this all, right? Um, and you just don't, you wanna make sure that this isn't at 43.88 in March, uh, because then you are just not getting enough money to keep your ships in good maintenance. Troop maintenance, 10%, facility maintenance, 5%. So this money just starts falling down a waterfall, right? Uh, it, you save the top 10%, then it goes into ship maintenance, troop maintenance, facility maintenance, and these would be your uh, projected amount available, 5,163. So far this year, 1481 is what you've spent. Anything that's excess here that doesn't get eaten up here, and this is why I said it's like a governor for how many ships you can build, is anything that's not used up here falls into colony growth and it funds your colony growth and you can see here colonies normally grow slowly but you can accelerate their growth by allocate allocating funding and then you have a decision to make so your leftover money after it falls all the way down here how much do you want to go into colony growth how much do you want to go into research and the way they have this set up kind of gives you an idea obviously of what the developers think anyway is most important colony growth early on i can tell you once you uh, get into the mid game and the empires have all expanded out and they're touching each other a little bit you're going to want to probably flip flop these and make research 90 percent and colony growth 10 percent but for now we're going to let the ai handle that um this also talks about how by these funding levels what your advisors are going to tell you to do and so you know if you're only doing 50 percent ship maintenance here they will tell you to build fewer ships right lending limiting spending in each area allows even more apportionment of your income to all areas of your economy prevent over overexpending in one area. Well, we're going to keep all this automated, so that should really kind of take care of itself. Maintenance. This screen shows the ship maintenance, so this is the third one here. Again, ship maintenance is so important in this game. Uh, costs for all ships and bases in your empire, whether state or privately owned. The military section shows the number and total maintenance of military ships in each role, so you can see all of the different military ships that we will eventually be able to build, and then you can see the other other state ships and so this is a really good way to say hey what's available to build uh, exploration ships construction fuel tankers colony ships uh, the different spaceports a defensive base research stations resource base and monitoring stations those are the state stations you can build 
these are the military ships you can build so anyway it will show how many um that you have and how much maintenance you're spending to maintain them so we have five exploration ships we're spending 520 this is all per year right um construction ships and small spaceports so that'll give you a real idea of how much it costs um exploration ships obviously cost what what is that 104 per year to maintain construction ships uh, are 105 a little bit over that um government okay we are a republic and this will just show you all of the different bonuses that we get for being a republic that's that's what that is and you can compare it to other types so if we did feudalism or we click feudalism there, it will show you a breakdown of the different government types. Uh, republic to Republic. How about we just go to nothing? Can we go to nothing? Not that I see. Um, okay, so we're a Republic. Great. That shows us that. This then shows us... Uh, oh, by the way, you can have a revolution and skip government types. Let's actually come back to that. There we go. If you click on this, you can have a revolution and switch government types. I would strongly recommend not doing that early on. It's really going to cause some upheaval, discontent, other things. Empire bonuses from all sources. And so, the, you know, if you want to know any bonus that you're getting and why, you can come to this screen in your empire uh, tab and it will tell you every single bonus you're getting in the game. And so all research 10%. Plus five from Akdarian, plus five from Republican form of government. Uh, construction research, plus 15. Why are we getting a negative 10 from war weariness? That's because we're a Republican form of government. Negative 20 from troop recruitment, that's Republican. Colony corruption reduction, Republican plus 20, plus five from the leader. So you can come here and see your government type, all of the bonuses you get for that, and then, you know, the empire-wide bonuses you're getting from everything okay your leader boss sarafu you can come here and look at him and then we've obviously already talked about policy settings which really goes into what's automated and what's not although you know you can also just set different um you know uh i guess guidelines for the ai if you want to minimum suitability you're saying we're not going to colonize anything that's less than 20 percent okay so, you know, there's all kinds of information and it can help you kind of learn the game a little bit just going through all of these policy uh, settings. Uh, okay, leader, you can, your leader location, it should be at one of the capitals, but you, if you wish, you can transfer him. He could maybe give bonuses to those other places. Uh, then policy settings, we talked about that. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think there's anything more to cover there let's oh we're going again now that i'm out of that screen we're going again and so that's empire that's empire and that's you know all of your economy funding levels maintenance government type leader and policy settings we haven't done diplomacy yet we've talked about characters uh let's see here we've got our exploration ships hang, heading out here and you can see this one has now arrived at escalon one and this looks like a volcanic planet. Who knows? We may find something interesting there. And usually when you do find something interesting, as this other exploration ship gets out here at Escalon 3, it will pop up over here and tell you if you've got decent resources. Speaking of which, let's go and look and see. Uh, there's no other place that looks that interesting. Um to build a mining station you can see here the graceful empress is mining here or building a mining station at your pamiva let's just go to your pamiva double click there and it looks like we actually have now oh did we build that there's the wary peril that's our exploration ship the graceful empress oh there we go that's why it was blinking i wondered she's headed out here to build the mining station and you can start to see the components uh building up there at the mining station we've got a lot of other ships here we see that we've got an exploration ship i believe yeah the wary peril is now off and let's go to exploration we've got uh the distant horde uh at okran which is the moon over here 
it is surveying and it'll take another 16 seconds. Uh, the Jubilant Empress is out at Escalon 3, Escalon 1, and it tells you exactly how much time until it's fully uh, explored. What is this? The Weary Peril is moving to Supreme Death? That sounds scary as heck. Let's watch this thing warp. Where are we going? Supreme Death? Oh my! Okay, where is he? Okay, here he goes. I say he. I don't know why I think the Weary Peril is a he, but I'm going to go with that. Uh, usually, uh, using the Brits' uh, nomenclature, all of these ships are she's, right? Her Majesty's ship, the Weary Peril. Well, we found something interesting out here, evidently. What is this? Supreme Death is a destroyer. But I think it's been destroyed. Uh, and you'll find this. You generally in your home system are going to find a ship from an ancient time. And so we had this on Auto Explorer. Once this kind of popped up on the radar, the, the uh, AI immediately sent this out. All right. And we're at Escalon 1, Escalon 2. Not quite yet. Okay. We are now paused because something big has happened. Junkyard encountered. We have discovered a junkyard in our home system. The yard has a large base protecting it. Interesting. A collection of ships lie scattered around the base in various states of disrepair. In addition, other junk and debris float nearby, some of which looks valuable. The base looks to be inhabited and active, preventing us from repairing and salvaging these ships or debris. This is called the Brigand's Haven, okay? And so, again, in your home system, you're always going to have this, for the most part, pirates. They're pirates. It's a pirate's cove, but it's called Brigand's Haven. So let's go. Whoa, that's a cool-looking ship, right? Well, we have no military ships now, and you can see they've got the Implacable Warlord. That's an escort. So we have now enc encountered first contact, guys. Uh, the Silent Victory, then we have a Destroyer, the Assured Renegade. Uh, let's go check out some of these ships. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's look at this other one. Where did that go? There's some asteroids there. What is this? The Supreme Death. Ooh, this has got like a cloaking device or something. Uh, this is a Destroyer. It's disabled, so it's already been destroyed. It is truly part of junk. Um, and you can see the triangles here, which means they're military type ships. The Silent Victory. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. That looks like something out of Star Wars, doesn't it? Um, this place, the Brigand's Haven. I'm sure there's some wild parties if those walls could talk at the Brigand's Haven. And then we have, what is this down here? That's the Implacable Warlord. Okay, okay. Now, you, now I said here a minute ago, uh, this one is obviously part of the junk. It's because if you look here, it says disabled, right? Uh, that doesn't mean it can't be jump-started, potentially, uh, but it is disabled. Okay, we're going to dismiss that. Uh, oh, no, we're under attack here. The weary peril is. That's why this came up red. Um, the Brigand's Haven itself is attacking. I do not want it to attack, right? It, or we do not want to attack back. We want this to jump out of here. And so let's put this, and you can, did we get hit? Yeah, you can see the hole got hit. Uh, we're jumping. It automatically jumped out of here. Why is that? Because our tactics are evade, evade. So all, all these ships, you know, we want them to be on evade, but he's about to get destroyed. His hull is down to 18%. Get the heck out of there, wary peril. They maybe just can't jump because they've been... Oh, they did. Okay. The Wary Peril jumped, and we're going to want this to go refuel and repair at the Ancient Agdarian Spaceport. So I hit that. And so now we know where the pirates are located. And you can see the Wary Peril is jumping back. Scared out of its mind, that crew is. Uh, but we've made some discoveries over here. At Escalon 3, we've discovered uh, Tidarios. It's rare inert gas. Okay, show me. Scoot back. Where is that? Okay, that's out here. And now you can see the resources pop up here as we find things. What was this over here on Escalon 1? Okay. On Escalon 1, we found a Salia. A Salia, I believe, is a purple gemstone used in weapons components. I thought it was a luxury good, but it's not. But 
uh, yes, this is Tabrakian Granite. You can see plus five colony development and plus one colony income. We need to get a construction ship there right away. Let's do a uh, pause, okay? Let's go to our construction ships. Um, well, better yet, let's go over to new mining locations, okay? Uh, Escalon 1, build a mining station there, okay? Uh, we want to get something out there as fast as possible. Tiderios, that's at 35%. Let's build that there. Um, now, this came up in the comments is if we have it on manual, when we click on it here, does that automatically send our construction ships over here? Let's find out. Let's find out. They may need to be on automated to do it this way, uh, but I don't think so. I think the construction ship should automatically jump over here. But I'm not seeing a mission. Hmm. Oh, we found something else on our home moon. Our exploration has detected unknown items at Trois. We should explore at higher levels. Okay. Well, let's do it. Um... It's interesting. Okay, hold on. Let's Let's back up here. Because I think that may be true. Manually control, auto build mining stations. We can do it that way. Let's just do that for now. Um, but I'm pretty sure, I guess that's actually correct. So if we are over here on the new mining locations and we click here to build a mining station, I don't think the construction ships will automatically go do that when you have them manually controlled. Okay, so now I've got them all, if we go back to our construction ships, I've got them all on auto build mining stations, auto build research stations, monitoring, resort, salvage, fully automate, manually control. Let's just do mining stations for now. Uh, okay, I mean, there's nothing I can do about this, right? That's fine. Keep uh, exploring our home world. So we still haven't found everything there, right? And let's go down to our spaceport. Where did the weary peril go? Let's go back to, ex okay, here it is. Is it in trouble? No, it's warping, it's warping. It's trying to get back. Yeah, it's like, oh my gosh, its hull is down to 18%. So it's gonna have to go back there. Our repair costs will go up. Um, it is what it is. Advisor suggestion, build this on this uh, asteroid FY592. Uh, a side mission. Okay, we'll build there. It's only got 12%, but, you know, we don't have a lot of places to build at right now, so that's fine. Where are other exploration ships? Let's put these on Auto Explore, just to get them out there. Now that we've done most of the, and, and we can always go back and grab one of them and say, you know, have you, have we uh, re, or surveyed, I'm sorry, Escalon 2? Well, I don't know. We'll go look. Oh, I don't want to be on the weary peril. It keeps dragging me that way. But that's headed back to our home moon. Have we done Escalon 2? No. Okay, so let's actually grab this and just uh, manually do that. So now it's going to jump over here and do Escalon 2. So you can do this. You know, keep them on uh, auto explore. And then if you see something you definitely want to get uh, explored, just you know, go to exploration ships, pick one of them and right click on what you want it to explore. And you can see now it's jumping over here, uh, the jubilant empress. Uh, let's go back to our construction ships. Okay. Uh, we've got one building at Escalon 3, one building at Escalon 1, and one now is going to build at that asteroid that our advisors suggested we build on. What did we find out here at Okran on this moon? Have we not completely... Oh, it's got 57 seconds left, and then we'll want to build another mining station at Okran. Just because you have a mining station here at Escalon 4, uh, well, that's not even the right way to put it. Let's say you have a mining station here. It's not going to mine over at Okran. It's only going to mine here on this planet, so you'd have to build another one on the moon. Just keep that in mind. Wow, we're getting a long ways this time, guys. I've, I've feel pretty excited about it. We've made first contact. Uh, we've now really getting, you know, a lot of things discovered out here. Uh, this was a really nice find on Escalon 1, uh, finding this luxury good. That's going to give us plus five colony development back at Troas. That's excellent. 
Um, and you can see what these other things do if you want. Necrostone is always important. Uh, if we look down here, Escalin 2, we're just now getting an explore, exploration. Easy for me to say, uh, ship there. We don't have an Escalin 3. I think that got destroyed by the pirates or something. That's probably why there's asteroids out. Oh, we do have it. Uh, but this is on the route. You would think where Escalin 3 is, the pirate base. Then we have Escalin 3 out here on the fourth ring out. And then Escalin 5, of course, is where we live. There. Uh, but then we have Escalin 4 here on the fifth ring. We're on the sixth ring out. I say ring. I just mean you know, what, what, how this is, would be orbiting if it was orbiting. Now, in the original game, these actually moved. Uh, I've been told because of the graphics requirements, they didn't want to do that right at the start. Uh, it just soaks up too much uh, power. But uh, eventually, they may have these things rotate again because it is actually quite cool. Um, are we done doing Okran yet? Did we just not find anything? It's got another 55 seconds, so it's doing a second scan of that. Okay. Let's go out to the Graceful Empress. This is also warping. Where is it warping to? There you can see when you're on the ship. Uh, the Lavish Splendor, it's warping. And as I zoom out, you see the arrow there. It's going to Escalon 1. The Sneaky Renegade. Where was that asteroid? Uh, oh, that's just over here. Okay. Well, that's good, because it'll be in position then. If we find finally find something here at Okran, it'll be in position to build something there. Excellent. Okay. I mean, so this game is uh, progressing right along. You know, I haven't totally min-maxed it like I would if we were playing a real game or something. Uh, there have been certain times where I've held some things back just so I can explain them kind of in the grand overall story. Uh, but hopefully you're kind of getting the idea of what's going on. Now, we have to worry about these pirates uh, because we have no military ships right now. Now, all of our ships do have defense capabilities, uh, some more than others, certainly. And if we go down here to our moon and zip around here to our ancient Agdarian spaceport, uh, as I had talked about before, it's got good shields, 576. It's got secondary shields here, 288 and 100% hull integrity. Okay, great. It's also got weapons on it that give it a strength of uh, 438. All right, and that doesn't mean a whole lot to you right now, but you can see, oh, we've just made uh, discoveries at Escalon 2. And so now our scout ships are out here and we've discovered, and this is always good to read through, I think, uh, when you're first learning and starting playing the game, because it'll tell you what each one of these resources does. Vafula scent is an intoxicating perfume that comes from the brilliant green flowers of the Vafula plant. The Vafula plant is a small bush um, that grows next to hydrocarbon lakes on carbonaceous worlds. It gives us plus, so it is a luxury good, it gives us plus four colony development back at Trawa, uh, Tarawa. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Um, dismiss, okay, that's excellent. And then we also discovered a new resource here, carbonite. Excellent, and uh, it's found on marshy swamps, mangroves, continentals. Uh, it you know, anything that requires great strength has carbonite in it. So we've now made a discovery at Escalon 2. And what does that mean? Well, we should go to our construction ships. Whoops, there we go. I guess we were already on them. And uh, you know what? I don't really want to build this here. Let's go here. We just barely had started it. We can always get back to that. But I would rather go to Escalon 2. back up well this is the easy way to do it Escalon 1 Escalon 2 so there it is there's Escalon 2 and we've now found this I want to go build at Escalon 2 so now we've got our construction ships at 1 2 and 3 uh, building mining stations and that's you know that's how you want to do it kind of at the big places unless you just find an asteroid that's got an unbelievable quantity of something or something you really need like a luxury good uh, I would say any place that has a luxury good build a mining station uh, because it's going to help your colony growth okay 
We've now found pirates. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of them next episode. So I'm going to stop right here. And next time when we come back, we're going to finally get into military. We're also 97, 97 I wish, uh, 79% of the way towards research labs. I did this one second because I want to build a research lab, show you how scientists work, uh, but we'll get into all of that next time. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Hopefully you're enjoying this and you're learning something as well. I know I'm enjoying it. Certainly great game, great game. And uh, I will be doing a Let's Play when we get through this tutorial, I'll be doing a Let's Play. And I think I'm going to play the Teakins, the little gerbil-like creatures, because they're one of the hardest races to play. So I think I will be doing that um, probably starting tomorrow, actually, when the game comes out. We'll do a full Let's Play, uh, and we'll bump up the difficulty level, and we'll make it a lot of fun. But uh, I hope you're learning uh, through this tutorial. That's the whole point of it. And uh, anyway, I'll be back with the next the next episode very soon. Don't worry about that. Strategy Gaming Dojo. Till next time, have a good one.